think I'll um, move on to um, Ms. Shruti over here. So, um, you know, one thing that we've also realized with experiential learning, it's just not field-based, but there's a lot that's happening in the classroom as well. You know, it could be simulations, case studies, and so on. So how does your classroom or the school setup cater to the needs of the students who are learning through this process? Right. Um, so uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and when it comes to the classroom setup or the physical space itself, um, I think the learning environment is equal to or directly proportional to learning outcome. How many of you would agree with that? That the physical space is extremely important. Um, and, it is, and it is sad that it's the one that's often most ignored, uh, the physical space. But as an architect, I'm acutely aware of the importance uh, that the physical space can have on our ability to perform and ways in which it can enrich our lives and enrich our learning every day. Um, so um, we strive to implement various physical settings across um, our schools um, that could enrich not just experiential learning, but various other instructional practices, whether it's active learning or project-based learning or problem-based learning. Um, so uh, some of the key measures that we've taken is that um, uh, there are no, uh, you know, there are no rows of tables and chairs in any of the classroom. Uh, whether it's kindergarten or primary or middle school. Um, as soon as you see these rows of you know, chairs and tables, the uh, teacher immediately takes on this role of uh, being the sage on the stage. But when it comes to experiential learning, it's crucial that the teacher uh, be a guide on the side. The teacher should be a facilitator and a mentor instead of you know, a lecturer. Um, so as soon as kids go in, uh, into these traditional classroom setups, they immediately take on this passive role, and the teacher, uh, you know, becomes uh, this content delivery, uh, you know, like content delivery uh, machine. Um, so we have uh, settings that, you know, um, like we have these flower tables that the kids can write upon. And we have these huge, uh, you know, display walls uh, where we put up uh, all of the work that the kids do when they're engaged in an experiential learning. Because one very important part about experiential learning is the aspect of reflection, as uh, some of the panelists already pointed out. And how do we know if the kids are on the right path when they're reflecting? So during that time, it is important to make thinking visible or rather to make their understanding visible. So we put up all their work on these display walls and they can go and make changes to it and make, uh, make tweaks to it as and when they go through uh, the whole unit. Uh, so it's extremely relevant uh, to have, uh, you know, uh, have the kids surrounded by uh, the content that they're learning about. Um, and another important aspect is that uh, we follow a lab-based uh, practice where the kids are not sedentary in one uh, classroom the entire day, but rather we have them move from one lab to the other, irrespective of the subject, whether it's math or social or social studies or English. Um, they kind of move from one lab uh, to the other. And what happens in this case is that I'm sure as, you know, principals and teachers, you know that there are kids who, 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 are, who have different learning styles. There are kids who are fidgety, there are kids who are restless and who have this, uh, you know, urge to keep moving. Um, so in, uh, you know, in that particular situation, uh, this kind of transition time where the kids are moving from one lab to the other kind of eases them of that urge and they're ready to focus, uh, you know, on the learning for the next 45 minutes or so. So it's ex uh, extremely important to have the kids moving because, you know, they are young kids and I think physical movement is, is a very important uh, part of it. And as they move from each, uh, e move from one lab to the other, they, there are various, um, you know, seating arrangements. It, the seating arrangement differs from one lab to the other. So in one lab, we have, uh, you know, these furniture uh, that uh, the kids can work on independently, and then they can be clubbed together to form bigger and bigger uh, group formations. So the kids can either work independently or they can work in twos, uh, say for a thing, pair share activity, and then they can work in big uh, groups as well. Uh, and in some labs, there are these chowkis where the kids actually sit on the floor in our traditional, you know, olden style. The kids actually sit on the floor and then they write on these uh, chowkis. So it's really important um, uh, for us to provide, you know, these variety of learning spaces so that, you know, they're never bored. I recently, um, you know, came across this, uh, you know, um, saying by a designer um, saying that simple is boring. 
uh, you know, or easy is boring. So it's really important, uh, you know, to uh, keep things interesting uh, for the students as they move from one space to the other. And I think physical space kind of adds uh, to or enriches the experiential learning process as a whole.